good evening everyone and we thank uh, everyone from australia and new zealand who have taken the time to join us for this free online workshop on how you can replace your spray uh, with your spray diaries with uh, a digital spray diary and we are joined today by russell davison who is the general manager for australia and new zealand and he's going to talk to us about how the foundable platform works in helping you track your job save time in documentation and be audit ready anytime uh, with your spray job uh, we also have today with us lara degastino who's the content experience manager hello everyone thanks vidi um yeah i thought i'd uh, just sort of start by talking a little bit about ag tech in general and uh you know the benefits of it the, the word gets thrown around a lot different things um you know get thrown upon us about why we should sort of adopt ag tech um so I'll share a little bit of a presentation and then we can we can go through uh the farmable app itself and and you show you how to get started I'll just uh share my screen with you guys so I guess the future of farming and uh as we know growing population in the world uh they're predicting we'll have 20, 10 billion people by 2050 and that will require 70% more food uh that's currently produced and as we know there's not a lot more land that's been uh, opened up to agriculture so it's it's going to have to be efficiencies is where that extra production comes from mainly precision farming is going to make up about around 30% of it they say and with the expectation that farms are going to have to use 90% less pesticide and herbicide so there we're going to have to be much more efficient less inputs uh but create 70 70% more food. So um you know the tech that's going to help with this looking at at different things like you know robotics, AI, uh drones, sensors, all these types of things. But the important thing is is getting the data in one place I guess which we'll go into in a sec. Uh so the reality of growing food today 90% uh of growers and and farmers are still still using spreadsheets or pen and paper. um you know going off last year's results or what's worked for the last 50 years which which does the job gets the job done but but there is efficiencies and changes that can be made to to improve the the conditions so i guess opportunities like i mentioned you know you've got sensors robotics analyzing imagery from you know satellites and drones um autonomous vehicles so unmanned robotic vehicles and harvesters sprayers uh and blockchain technology for supply chain tracking and and things like that being able to have that traceability uh back to the paddock paddock to plate so i guess yeah some soil health health examples there's a lot of talk about soil carbon and um things like that um sensors with your micro and macro nutrients in the soil so taking soil samples and then getting a a digital digital, digital image of that those those readings nutrient programs a lot of nitrogen mapping and then getting variable rate spray programs and things off them uh our food are doing a great job of of identifying uh crop sizing and giving giving estimates on on fruit load and and harvest estimates and things um some more more from pixel farm and autonomous robots so i guess the real idea is what are the barriers for the farm today to start adopting this sort of stuff and it tends to be you know humans um network connections the cost of it new equipments required and really the interoperability of of all these platforms and being able to to talk to each other and and use you know the data that's coming in um having a smart weather station and a a soil moisture sensor that having to open up two different programs to view that sort of data where really you know you want to know what the weather's coming what the soil sensors are saying you know what the, what what kind of irrigation timings and things am i going to need to use in the coming days um because of that data so it's really important that it's interoperable you know having it all on sheets of paper and in spreadsheets and in different apps and things uh is limited in in what the technology can do for you so we really need uh a data management system um and that's what we at farm will uh are setting out to achieve we have a mobile app and web portal uh, which you can really start using for the on on the ground tasks um the day-to-day activities uh that you're currently doing so you can really get started it's a it's a free app the very low barrier to entry you can download it and just play around with it you can draw a field and and give it a try so it's important 
you know, to replace the pen and paper, start recording the data in a in a way that can be you know shared with these other devices and other technologies that are coming. As I said today, you know, we can get control over those farm activities. You can get an overview of, of what's happening on the farm, resource management, you know, giving jobs to your team, uh, seeing when jobs have been complete. You can track jobs as they're live and, you know, record all that treatment information that usually you'd be doing on a paper spray diary. We can now, we can now do that automatically um, through recording a job in Farmable. So yeah, future benefits, like I said, you know, integrating with all those other ag tech platforms that are coming. And we aim to try and integrate with these guys as, as you progress through the app and uh, pick and choose what's gonna suit you on your farm. Uh, so replacing your spray diary is, is really the first step we've found that uh, farmers that have been adopting Farmable have found it to be the most helpful thing for them um, right off the bat. Got a quick field view when you, when you enter the app, um, you can then plan your jobs entering all your chemical requirements and things, which we'll do in a little demo in a second. You can track your job through the field. And if you've dele delegated that job to a worker, you can also overview how they're going as well. So if you wanted to just click on the spray job and see how Steve was going in that back, back, back paddock, um, you can see where his tracks are. You can see if you know any rows have been missed or if he's asleep under a tree or something like that. Um, we also have some pest and disease scouting features and harvest logs as well, which is which is a really important one, um, which I'll get into in a sec. So part of our, I guess, treatment uh, record keeping, we have a, a safe spray module, which going off the label uh, parameters, uses those time between applications, the number of applications per season, the total volume of a certain active that you can use per, per season. Um, and it gives you alerts on that. So when you're planning your job, It'll give you a warning, as you can see on the screen there. It's used one day ago. You must wait until a certain date. If it was a, you know, seven days between treatment or something, um, the maximum amount of sprays allowed per season and volumes, etc. Also gives the whole team an overview of what's happening. So anyone that's that's on board the app, you know, you can have as many uh, as many farm workers on the app as you want, and um, they can just open it up and see that. This paddock's just been sprayed. Um, you know, it's 24 hour re-entry period. So you'd need PPE if, if you were gonna enter um, and also get a quick harvest date too. So if you've got a withholding period after spraying, you can get a quick idea of when the earliest harvest is, is allowed. Um, and then the reporting module is the other piece of it. So this is really capturing that treatment record. Um, you set up the job in the app, which we'll do in a sec. Uh, after it's complete, it's it's automatically put into the logs on the web portal, so you can log in at any time and see what field was treated, the area that was covered, the operator that did it, uh, the weather's being automatically brought in as well. You know the amount of chemical, the amount of water, all those different things that are required from a, a normal paper spray diary that you'd fill in after a spray is already done, waiting for you there in the web portal, and that's you know unlimited downloads throughout the year. You can you can bring it down on a spreadsheet if you wanted to to add up you know how much glyphosate you use through the whole year you could just go through the treatment and just just see that you'd use you know 600 liters if you knew you might want to look at buying a pallet or something next year or any anything else that you wanted to sort of look at as far as your, your treatments went and the auditable report is is the best bit it's it's just a pdf that's replacing your spray diary and and all those treatment records are there so we also do um, a Teams and Timesheets module, which is really about labour tracking. So giving you, you know, the total hours worked in each paddock and each job type as well. So you could see you'd spent 150 hours spraying this year or you'd spent 50 hours repairing fences and, and you know, get a better idea of those sort of things. And also uh, regarding harvest as well, we, we can put harvesting teams uh, on the app. They don't need an app. You can just get a permanent member to clock the harvest team in in the morning, clock them out in the afternoon. Uh, and whatever whatever block or paddock they've been harvesting in throughout the day, their labor time's recorded against that, that block and against the crop as well. So at the end of the year, if you're pulling off apples, um, you, could, you could have a look at the apples that came from field B and get an idea of that, the labor cost and the chemical cost that's gone into producing those apples. 
and things like that. So yeah, it's a, a simple clock in, clock out. Uh, you can also submit a timesheet if you wanted to just record uh, the labor at the end of the day. Um, but clocking in and clocking out gives you that extra feature of automatically pulling in those different, different job types. So you can see in the little example here, uh, we've recorded three hours and 42 minutes spraying today, two hours and 70 minutes pruning. So it's allocating that, that time and labor against those different job types. And we, we can also get piece rate as well. So when you're picking, if you're paying, you know, blueberry guys, paying guys per bucket, you can quickly log a five kilo bucket in the harvest, um, select exactly who's, who's logging it and submit. So then you can go to the logs on the web portal and just, just print out Max has, Max has done 40 buckets today and, and pay accordingly sort of thing. That's the quick, quick harvest entry going to be done in the app. You can also geolocate it with a pin. Um, take a photo if you want to take a photo of a, of a bin label or even the, the crop quality from the top, um, any particular comments. And then someone in the shed could see where the pin was, where the, where the, the produce is sitting sort of thing to go collect it if needed. Data is all organized per field. So it's very, very field centric and farmable where everything's traceable back uh, to the field and, and to the crop as well. Um, so we can get a good idea of that, that profitability per field. Um, as I mentioned, yeah, sales management. So after we do a harvest entry, uh, the harvest is sitting there in, in storage on the web portal, and then we can create a sale. So we can select the customer it's going to, how much it was, what, what price you received. And then we trace all that back to the field. So we know time spent, chemical cost, and then we can put our, our revenue against that and see what's profitable, what, what, you know, what blocks are, are paying the bills and what, what you're spending a lot of time in and, and not getting much out of, so help you make better decisions as a baseline. So yeah, I guess getting started with, with Farmble is, you know, a really easy way to, to set yourself up um, to add a lot of this other tech in the future with, with weather stations and soil analytics and satellite imagery and things. Very easy to, to get started and make it easier for you to use that data in a, in a uh, easier way. So I might um, do a quick demo on the mobile of just sort of how easy it is to do a spray job. Uh, let me just stop sharing. So you can just click on the, the Farmable app. Um, you can see here, I've got a, a farm already created, but we can come uh, to the top left-hand corner here and see all the different farms that I belong to. We can just register a new farm like that. So when you first download the app, you're greeted with a, a farm name, um, your country is probably going to automatically come up and then and create. Um, that's basically it. Then you'll be you'll be brought to a to an empty screen like this, and the the first thing to do is to draw draw that first field. Um, as I mentioned, the data's really kept you know per block or per field, so it's it's vital to get started just to to draw the fields. Um, you know, it does take a little bit of time from the web portal. If you do have digital images of your fields already, we can we can import them. So that's a that's a process you can do online. But uh, yeah, drawing the field boundaries, uh, click on the field and and draw. Um, we can just do a, a quick one here. So if we want to add field, we just get a little icon, and it's just a, a quick tap to draw. So if we want to do our first job, we can just create a job. And there's some preset uh, jobs in here, spray job, fertilize, fertigate, harvest. Uh, Multi-location is a really good one to have a play with. You can, you can drop a pin wherever there's something that needs attention. It could be dead, dead plants or broken fence posts or heap of blackberry bush that you want to spray and just, just drop a pin on it. Once you've got enough pins, uh, you can then just allocate that to a different worker and, and then they can just follow the GPS points and um, go around and, and treat anything that needs treating. Um, but let's let's do a spray job. So we can select uh, a crop type we want to spray if we want to spray all, all of our apples, for example, um, or we can just select the fields individually. So if we just select these two blocks, we hit next, tell what we're treating, we're going to treat insects. Um, the cause here, we can automatically select it. We can add a new one if we want to. Um, so these are just up to you how you want to put them in. And then we select the product. So we can add a new product up the top right hand side if you wanted to. 
um, but we can just add uh, a product that we've already got. And we can see I've got a little safe spraying warning that I've, I've used all plans this twice already uh, out of the season. So I say thank you. We can add more products there if you wanted to put uh, wetting agents in or, or multiple active sprays. Um, any particular comments you might say, you know, make sure you agitate the tank or, or use, um, you know, use caution or something. Hit next. <clears throat> we select our equipment. So at the moment, we'll just select a, an air blast sprayer, which has got a, um, you know, pre-calibrated 500 litres a hectare. Um, if you wanted to go heavier, you could change that to a thousand litres a hectare, whatever you wanted to put, but that's just a general, that's what my sprayer is set up as. <clears throat> So I can do the job myself at this point or anyone else that I've invited to my farm. So I could, I could click on Lars and get Lars to do the spray job. He'll then get a notification. And when he turns up in the morning and clicks on his jobs, it'll be uh, top of the list to do. So I'll, I'll just do this job for the sake of the demo. Uh, we can select today's date or if I wanted anyone to do it tomorrow, we could pick, pick whatever date we wanted to. We hit next. Uh, so it's already done the calculations for me. So knowing uh, the hectares of those two fields that we've selected, we can see that we need uh, you know, the tank size is 2000 liters. So we're gonna need one tank and then the last tank's gonna be just a bit under a half tank, 890 liters. So it's given us the water and it's told me how much comforter I need to. I need 6.98 liters per tank. So the, the, the last half tank will be 3.1. 3 so it makes it quite easy for, for someone to pick up a spray job. Um, they can then go down and see the details of the job. So there was no special comments, it needs to be done today. These are the two blocks that I need to go to. So it gives them an idea of where they're gonna head, um, what they're spraying for, the product that they need. And we can just start the job now. So we're sitting at the shed where we're filling up with water. We can go to the top right hand corner here get a reminder of, of what we needed to put in the tank. You can see down the bottom, you can add a, a photo, take a photo of the batch number on the drum uh, to record that against the job. Um, we come back out, we can then hit start uh, and we need to track accurately. So this is the important bit, just to allow Farmville to track you all the time. Um, and that allows you to navigate away from the app if you wanted to to check a, an email or, or look at Facebook or something like that. Um, it just allows you to track in the background so you don't you don't lose any of that, um, that tracking. So then we hit start. So the duration's being, being tracked. Um, we can get a current speed, average speed. So as, as we move the phone around, we can hide that as well now. So as you hide that, you could come in, you could look at other jobs. Um, you could, you know, make a note for someone um, if you wanted to, or, or just check on a note you'd made in the past. Then we just, up the top there, we just, we just click on the job again and come back. So we can pause the job. Uh, if you wanted to leave, go back and fill up when you did run out of that first tank. Um, we can come back and resume. And then we're, we're tracking again. Uh, we'll pause and we'll finish. So we can say if there's anything worth reporting. If you didn't only get halfway through a job, um, you could put that in there. If you wanted to then pass that to another worker, they can see the tracks in the field that are that are halfway halfway down the field. So another worker will pick up the job. They can they'll see the tracks that are already laid, and then they'll be able to drive straight up, start the sprayer exactly the point where where you'd finished. So we can hit finish, and that's done. So the completed spray jobs in there with the log, the weather. As I mentioned, we've got wind speed. Um, any rain or, or temperature um, is automatically collected. That is doing a spray job and no need to do my spray dyer anymore. Um, what I might do is just show you the logs in the web portal now, and we can have a look at the spray job we've just done and see what it looks like. So you can see uh, yeah, same same spray, same field that we just had in the app. We can see we've got some warning icons that have come up because we've finished that job. So we've we've got a warning here that we've just sprayed. Um, you know, until tomorrow we're going to need PPE in there. Um, we come to the logs. 
you can filter your logs um, lots of different ways, but for this, we will go for spray jobs and we've gone completed spray jobs. And then we should see at the top is today's job in two fields, the area, what we were treating. Uh, we can click on here, see the duration. Uh, we've got weather, the total area, the different varieties of apples that were treated. And then we can just export for PDF. So as you can see, it just creates a PDF report. We've got totals there of all the chemicals we've used from whatever date you've selected to filter for, um, the total areas that have been treated, whether uh, if there's a withholding period for, for harvest there. Everything you should need for an audible report um, is yeah automatically created for you. So um, yeah, if you've got any questions, I'm sure you've been commenting below, but um, if you think of anything else you'd like to talk about or learn about, then please get a hold of us. We'll leave contact details at the end of the presentation or just hit us up on Facebook Messenger if you wanted to, to have a chat about, we'd be happy to talk. Yeah. So that was really interesting because uh, what what we do today when we do a spray job is we, we sort of mentally calculate whatever needs to be done, right? Whereas in the Farmable app, you've got the tank mix calculator that just automates all that for you. So you just enter in the details that you that you would like, and then it does the calculation. Yeah, yeah, and the I mean the the other the other feature is that an advisor, if you've got an agronomist or something giving you a recommendation, uh, you can invite them to the app as well, and they can just shoot you over the exact brew that they want you to spray or they recommend you to spray. Um, you can then edit that if you wanted to, and and then just delegate that straight to a worker. So. Um, there is a paper trail as well from, you know, an agro giving you a recommendation on a treatment, you accepting it or adjusting it and setting the date, sending it straight through. And then, like you said, there's no like calculations needed. The, the, the rates and stuff are all done for you. So it's, yeah, it's really, it's really cool like that. And then having the automatic report at the end of it's just another bonus. So the fields are really easy to set up, right? That once you create your farm, you can draw your fields. But is there also another way to, let's say, automatically import your fields? Yeah, yeah. Farm? Yeah, I mentioned that you can just go to the web portal and, and um, yeah, just uh, import your fields if you do have digital files. But um, if you don't, it really doesn't take that long to, to draw um, in the app. It's, it's almost a bit of fun. Can we see where the importer is on the web portal? It'd be nice to get a sense of that. This is sort of the main menu bar here, I guess, on the left-hand side. You've got a, um, a profile here where you can change some preferences and things for alerts, but um, down here, you can enter your products and causes if it's easier for you to do on the computer. Um, if you're using your Teams and Timesheets module, you can put your harvesting teams there. You can change time settings with breaks and things like that. Um, this is the field importer. So you can quickly just upload the shape files you've got in GeoJSON. Um, then you can edit them a little bit if it doesn't sit quite right, but they, they usually look pretty good and then and then save. So after you've done that, you can go in and, and put the extra details in the field if you want to, um, just so you've got uh, you know, distance between rows if, you, if you're tree cropping, uh, space between trees, um, number of trees per field and that that can also be used in the future we also do tree height and things like that as well um, for some for some coming features in regards to uh, tree wall volume and things like that um, but yeah it's a pretty easy import tool so it won't necessarily take a lot of time for farmers if they'd like to let's say import existing fields and get started um, through the web through the web portal no no, no. you've just got to have them Those yeah I was like, I don't know, unless you've used something else, how often you'd have digital files hanging around like that. The the difference is that typically tools like this would be desktop first, right? It's really expensive or difficult to get started. You need a demo, you need a salesperson or some support team member to help you get started mm. with farm management software. But we've consciously decided not to do that, right? And make it so easy that it's as easy as downloading 
the farmable app and just getting started. So you don't need everything is self serve in that process. Yeah, exactly. And it, it was really important to to not need any hardware either. Like you don't have to go buy uh, you know a special device like a like a, a spray GPS to get it to work or, you know, a, a special tablet. Like everyone's got a, a smartphone that works fine on Apple or Android or um, there's quite a few users that have got, you know, just bought a few of last generation Android tablet and, and sit them in the tractors. So all their crew members can just log on whenever they get a job um, to the to the farm tablet, have it plugged into the cigarette lighter or something and 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 track themselves. So it's yeah, it's a really, really low barrier to entry, I guess. Like there's no upfront costs. You can use the free app for as long as you want. Um, we didn't talk about it very much, but you know, it's we're not selling ads inside the app. Um, and it's really important to us that the farms own the data. Like it's not going anywhere else. The farm always owns the data. So that's an important, important point about the data because Safety and security is such and privacy is such an important part of the farmable app and web portal, right? The platform has privacy by design. So if you the farmer basically decides who they would like their share, who they would like to share their data with. It's not just just because you're documenting it doesn't mean that everybody has access to it. It's it's your data and as a farmer you decide yeah. who gets access to it, right? Exactly. Like I said, you can you know choose who you invite to the app. Um, no one else has got access to it. Um, even your agronomist or advisor, when you invite them, you can select a certain crop type that you want them to, to have access to. So if you, you know, had some had some cattle and some apple trees, you could just say, oh, I just want him to see the, the apple blocks. Um, so they won't get any access to, you know, the other part of your farm or if you had an advisor for your berries that wasn't doing the apples, then you can you can also choose what they see um and yeah the farm owner has has the permissions in the web portal to make any changes to the account so no one else has got got that ability yeah and it's also there's so much time saved right that because it's all documented digitally and it's such an easy to use app that you don't really need to maintain like physical um spray diaries and yeah yeah we had a uh, we did a blog about it the other day but um one of our users a mango growers is saving about two and a half hours every time they do a spray job. So, you know, by the time they get around all their blocks um, and used to used to come back and, you know, spend over two hours um, doing the spray diary and remembering all the treatments and yeah, just having it done has been a, has been a real like eye opener for them about how much time they've been spending just doing that documentation. And, you know, this is the first one, just doing the, the treatments, but, you know, we aim to, to make more efficiencies in, in a heap of different areas as well. So um, Teams and Timesheets is doing the same thing with that labor tracking and, but yeah, for, for spray jobs, not having to do that, the spray diary, because no one wants to do it. Everyone forgets that some people try and do it at the end of a week and and forget exactly what was done. So yeah, it's, it's really awesome and not have to have, you know, a, a rate controller or something and pull out the SD card and go and upload the file and see what was what was sprayed, you know, it's the, the record's already there. Yeah, so a lot of the mental processes that uh, typically farm managers, operators and farmers would have to do is just taken care of because it's all live documentation from the field. Yep. Yeah, that sounds really awesome. Um, so the other thing also with regards to the whole platform is that we consciously decided to keep uh, features, some features free, uh, but it's not, it's not something that, um, like you said, there are no ads. So we are not sort of selling that data to someone else. It's just free because we realize that, um, getting started and uh, the cost of sort of using these technologies is really expensive, right? So how, how does the free features and the paid add-on modules work? Yeah. I mean, uh, the, the free app itself has, uh, you know, has its its merits like uh, using the notes being able to delegate jobs to all your team members and things uh, like that pdf report um, is 79 australian or new zealand dollars per year uh, so it's it's less than the price of, of buying a spray book or a spray diary um, but you get all the other benefits with it so yeah we, we wanted to make it modular free to use um, and you really only pay for what you need you know some farms 
the spray diary is enough. Um, some farms want teams and timesheets or, or sales management, um, or if you wanted to add a weather station or a sensor or whatever you wanted to do in the future. Um, but being modular, you can make it fit your farm. You don't, you know, have to subscribe to everything or pay a, you know, four thousand dollars a year for for a lot of features that you don't need. So that was important just to make it to make it modular and. Yeah, that sounds really good. So I think this has been um, such an such an informative session, and I'm sure everyone here there are tons of comments uh, that we will get through. But um, thank you so much, Russell, for your time and for showing us how the platform works. And thanks, Lara, for uh, sort of staying in and also helping us organize this entire this entire workshop. So I think we can wrap the session up today. My name is Didi, and I'm so glad to see all of you here. Uh, so have a good day. Thanks, everyone. Absolutely. And send us a message. Feedback's always welcome.